Hey folks, it's Chris, welcome back. Last time we set the base of our setup by choosing the tripod. This time we move one step up and attach the most important part of all our Astro equipment, the telescope mount. Main message out straight away. Choose the telescope mount with great care because it highly determines what path you will be able to walk down within this hobby. Um, telescope, camera, perfect filter, all that is useless with a mount not fitting your requirements. I wanted to join the Astro Imaging Gang, so I needed a German equatorial mount, which I covered in more detail in one of my latest videos. A German equatorial mount, or short EQ, looks like this. This is a Scourge EQ3R Pro mount. Seriously, to me as a beginner it looked rigid and massive compared to anything I had seen in photography land so far. And yes, it's a nifty little mount for bigger DSLR lenses or smaller telescopes, but mm, I'll show you the big brother in a second. Okay, so first of all, the mount connects to the mounting plate of the tripod like that. Screw inside here, tension tight and firm, ready. Make sure the Alde As knobs here are gripping the nose of the tripod here. If you're unsure what Alde As means, please check it out, it's very important. Okay, as the EQ mount will need to balance your telescope perfectly later on, you will need this extension bar for holding the counterweights. It goes in like that. Screw tight and then attach the counterweights here and you're done. Some mounts can store the bar inside the mount, handy but not necessary. This plate here attaches to the telescope itself and there are two main standards for attachment called Vixen style or Luzmendi style. Then attaching the telescope is very easy. Just slide in the scope's adapter plate and close the clutches or screws or whatever is there on your specific mount. Just make sure it's tight, it holds your telescope. So with this small scope the counterweights are not far out to balance the mount perfectly. And that's good. Important rule for astrophotography with a high need for accuracy, don't put too much stress onto your mount. If the counterweights need to be all out in order to hold your setup balanced, that's not good. I ran into the same problem when attaching my bigger Newtonian telescope to this mount with all the equipment and camera and stuff, so I needed to switch to a bigger mount. So here it is. The EQ6R Pro, the big brother of the smaller EQ3. I mean, you can clearly see, it's much more massive, it can handle much more weight and it's of much greater accuracy. But it basically works the same, figure out one EQ mount and you know them all. So, we attach the mount to the tripod, we added the counterweights and we can attach a telescope to the mount itself. But the mount has a bunch of different other things that are visible can be overwhelming at first. But never mind, we're gonna tackle them all. First and most importantly, there are two by two knobs you can turn. Those are the alt as adjustment knobs. The EQ mount is rotating and in sync with the night sky. Watch my video about tracking if you're unfamiliar. And to do so, we need to align the scope, or the mount to be more precise, with Earth's rotational axis. And this is called polar alignment. To align the rotational axis of the mount with that of Earth, we need to turn the mount left, right, called azimuth and up down called altitude until it matches perfectly and we use those two knobs for left right or azimuth and those two knobs for up down or altitude. For most mounts I use this means loosen the first one and then tighten the second one. They work in pairs like this. Loosen left, tighten right and back again but never put too much stress on those two knobs, they don't like it, but tighten them reasonably well. During pole alignment it's useful to spot the star pattern near Polaris and hence peer through the rotation axis of your telescope. Most mounts are equipped with a little additional telescope called polar scope sitting, what a surprise, within the rotation axis of your telescope or mount. Some are illuminated, some are not, it depends on how often you want to use it. I don't, I do it via PC, but out in the field it can be very crucial, or at least handy. Many telescopes will only give you access to the polar scope when turning them 90 degrees like that, whatever. But once you remove those two caps here, 
like this, you can easily spot the star constellations and move the two alt as knobs until you match the desired position. More on that in a later video. The strange circular markers on those two axes can be used to navigate through the night sky. They can be set to display the current coordinate position, but in this setup with a computerized mount we don't use them, but they look fancy anyway. But let's leave alignment behind and turn to actual usage. All mounts will come with two clutches or whatever appearance to hold or release the two main rotational axes of your telescope, the RA and DAC axis. When sewing motorized, you don't want to open them, but you will need them for any manual control over the telescope. Just like before, make sure you close them tightly, but don't overstress the material. So far so good, but then we have a bunch of adapters left. They vary from mount to mount, but most mounts will have the following. Power switch and power supply, mostly 12 volts AC, often driven by car batteries on fields or DC AC adapters at home. Just make sure to give the mount enough margin for high current peaks. Best Google your mount's energy requirements in beforehand to avoid trouble. Here's the adapter for the handheld for computerized or motorized mounts, like this. You can control the mount's alignment and the movement and of course the pointing with this device. This adapter can also be used to connect the mount directly to the PC and thus replace the handheld with the PC. This gives you much greater control over the mount, but you need an additional computer instead of the handheld here. Many mounts come with an additional USB port as a second option for connecting directly to the PC. In this case you don't need a mount to USB cable, but you can use any standard USB cable. And then you'll most probably find a quite similar port like the first one. And this is the port for the auto guiding and this port runs the guide cam if you don't connect the guide cam to the PC directly. And if all that cable confuses you, don't worry, I'll have another video where I go through all of this in great detail, but in this time, right here and now, I just want to give a quick overview. Just best make sure to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, so that you don't miss any further videos. Last but not least, here some mounts supply you with an additional port for direct camera control called Snap. This way you can control the exposure and stuff of your DSLR out in the fields by just using the hand control. Most folks tend to use an additional device called Timer Release, but that would be another optional way. So power, handheld or PC, uh, guide cam if necessary, snap camera control, that's that. I mean you might spot differences. My EQ6 here has the motors built inside, the EQ3 Pro here has the motors attached additionally because it's available without motorization as well. So this little black box here on the EQ3 holds the movement and pointing electronics and supply the motors with power. I mean there are similar things inside the EQ6 but built inside. Handy but more expensive. And I can't detach the motors from the EQ6 and run it manually as I could do with the EQ3. Why ever I should do that? EQ6, EQ3, there are many options for mounts out there and that can be overwhelming at first. But just ask yourself a simple question. What do you want to do with your setup? I mean, permanent setup, deep sky and astrophotography with hours and even entire nights worth of exposure time, occasional planet spotting, traveling or portable setup for deep sky field trips, motorized for imaging or manual for visual. The answers to those questions will narrow down the available mounts a lot. And yes, that's basically it. Choose a fitting mount, pair it with a rigid tripod, never put too much weight onto your mount, that can ruin your entire setup. And following those rules, we are good to go to move on to the next section of this chapter, the bare telescope itself, called OTA. And if you aren't subscribed, consider doing so and leave a comment down below and hit that like button if you wish, in order to help that video float on top of the YouTube algos. And yes, as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.